Hello and welcome everyone. My name's Sue Elson. Welcome to LinkedIn for Creatives. Uh, great to see you all here. I'm really pleased to see a number of people I know. So hello to all of those that I know. Welcome to the people who haven't met me before. And also welcome to anybody who is watching this online at a later date. Now, LinkedIn for Creatives is a topic very dear to my heart. There are many of us who have been on a journey, for want of a better word, and have got to a point in our lives where we like to be creative and others of us have been creative forever. Um, but we haven't always had an opportunity to showcase that capability in the online environment. And I'm well aware that a lot of creatives would much rather be creative than be learning about LinkedIn. Uh, so I really, really admire you for being here. I'd like to particularly thank Gemma Dunellen. She is the person whose LinkedIn profile I'm going to be showcasing today. So when I do presentations for larger groups, I normally pre-prepare by getting somebody as profile up to date so I can showcase that. So Gemma's profile will be showcased today. That means I've logged into her account so that you can see from the back end uh, with her permission. And as soon as this session is over, she must change her password. I'm very adamant about not keeping people's passwords, uh, but that will be used so that you can check her out online. Gemma, if you'd like to copy paste your LinkedIn URL in the chat, if anybody would like to connect with Gemma, I'm sure she'd be most welcome to hear from you. So let's get started with the slides. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the top 10 techniques for creatives, top 10 ways to use LinkedIn for creatives. And please just mute your microphone whilst we're doing the presentation, if you can, thank you. And top ways to manage your LinkedIn activity in 20 minutes per week. So there's a lot to cover and I'm going to be switching between PowerPoint and uh, the internet so that you can see both. Whilst I am sharing my screen, your video and your name will not appear on the recording. Um, if you don't feel like having your face on the screen, that's fine. You can leave yourself the video turned off and I will be asking for questions. So you can pop the questions in the chat uh, at any time and um, I'll keep an eye on that as well. So as a special gift for coming, you are welcome to download any one of my first four books for free. Uh, so I hope you find that helpful. Uh, one of my favourites is obviously the first one being all about LinkedIn, which is a very strategic book. And the last one there, Geeksters, was written before the pandemic and it's all about the future of work and it's really aligned to the creative journey. I have not had a real job since 1994. So it's based on my experience of earning a living out of my pursuits and using technology to attract aligned geeks. If you would like to pay me for those books, you can go to my website at 120ways.com and purchase them there. So the other thing I invite you to do is to follow or subscribe to me online. Now, anybody who's already doing this will know that I only share value. I'm not selling all the time online because in my heart, I'm an educator as well as a practitioner and I really love sharing information. So if you've got the opportunity to, um, yeah, follow me. Uh, I'd love some more on those other platforms apart from LinkedIn. You know, you can see that I, I don't have quite as many followers or subscribers on some of those. Um, but you're also welcome to subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter. And if you prefer, you can receive it via email. So to give you a tiny bit of background on me, I started my career at Westpac in Adelaide six days after my last year 12 exam. And I worked in a bank in many different roles for 11 years. And I'm extremely grateful for that corporate experience. Uh, then when I moved from Adelaide to Melbourne, I got a job, found out I was pregnant, got sacked. And so that's basically why I haven't had a real job ever since. I've done a whole bunch of things. So my first website went online in 2001 newcomersnetwork.com. I set up Camberwell Network in 2012 and I run a monthly event. So for any of you who are in Melbourne who like to get up on the second Wednesday of the month at 7.30 a.m., uh, we meet and we had a really fantastic group this morning. Lots of amazing, diverse people with all sorts of experience and I tell you what, we got through a lot of information in one hour. It was fantastic. Uh, and then, of course, my website for publishing my books. I'm a member of a number of associations, as you can see there. And my future direction, because I always want to know what's coming up next, 
is to be a writer. So I presume that I won't be a paid writer until I've written 10 books. Mind you, I've written heaps of content on the internet. Uh, but um, yeah, the next goal is to get to those 10 books. I've done five. I've got two in the on the offing. And who knows what's going to happen after that. So just a bit of general housekeeping, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, and all people with any Indigenous background. This event welcomes everyone of any background, any age, any faith, any religion, any gender, like you name it, culture, um, you're welcome. All of this information is general. It's not designed for specific personal circumstances, but you can book an appointment and I can work with you directly. The slides and the video recording link will be sent to you after the presentation. As I said before, you can leave your video camera off and your microphone off whilst the presentation's running. Again, please put the things in the chat. Um, you can learn more about me on my website and my past clients list. And I will be asking you what's been most helpful to you at the end. I copy paste some of those answers into my website, not with any person's name, but I really appreciate any feedback you can give me uh, because it just means that I keep improving. And I'll also be recommending that you find a way to say thank you uh, because it is a free webinar. And I was up till one o'clock last night or this morning uh, preparing this presentation for you all. So I, I really hope you find it helpful. So what's my definition of a creative? Well, it's anybody who has, I guess, a, um, an interest in creative things. Creators, artists, uh, you know, some people call one thing, some people call another, musicians, songwriters. Oh, greetings, Lizette from South Jersey, New Jersey, USA. First LinkedIn event. Wow, I'm so privileged to have you with us. Um, LinkedIn events are an amazing thing. I've written an article on LinkedIn events and strategy. If you Google that, that will give you some insights into how to run events. I prefer to run my events on Zoom so I can record them, put them on YouTube, reuse them in the future. Some people run LinkedIn Lives. I don't find that they're as successful. Uh, but if you run the LinkedIn Live under your company page, it will keep it on your videos tab on your company page. So that can be an option. So, uh, yeah, just a little quick tip from there. So back to creatives, makers, photographers, filmmakers, videographers, designers, managers, agents, multimedia people, I don't know, people who are involved in NFTs, because uh, I hear that that's image that you can trade now. So look, anybody who feels that they have a creative flair in any discipline, it could be you're an engineer and you have a creative approach to it. Um, really, there's no specific definition, but I guess I'm thinking mostly of people who are artists in, in some way or another. There is an article I've also written that goes into a bit more detail and you're welcome to check that out at any time. So why should you even bother with LinkedIn? Well, you will be Googled and you'll be Googled by clients, anybody who refers you, patrons who might be willing to support you financially with uh, special campaigns, audience members might check you out, um, students who love your work, colleagues, friends, peers in the industry, old people you used to date. I don't know. Any number of people are going to Google you at any time in your life. So it is really good to have an identity that is likely to appear in search results. And a lot of you may have names that are similar to somebody else. So if you optimise your LinkedIn profile and someone is looking for you where you are based, the location where you are based, you are more likely to appear in those Google search results. I also recommend if you have no other online presence, that LinkedIn is the number one place to start if you're going to venture out on that creative journey, uh, even if you've had a professional background in the past. But I'd also suggest at some point you consider having a website in your own name. So it doesn't have to be in the name of some enterprise you start. It's actually your name. So I had my first website, newcomersnetwork.com in 2001, but by Sue Elson, it took me till 2012 to put it up. So don't beat yourself up if you don't have one yet, but you can create a free website at business.google.com. So if you've got a Gmail email address, go to business.google.com, create a profile, and on the left menu, it will say website. 
You can put a free website up this afternoon and it can appear in search results almost immediately. So there's no excuse not to have a website. And then you can, you know, put all your art, uh, images and videos, whatever, on that free website. Google loves it if you've got 100 or more images on your own free website. So also back to LinkedIn, over 15 million people in Australia on LinkedIn. And uh, what you need in life is a network. And I spoke to an artist some years ago, and he is an actor, and he's managed to make a living out of acting. And the number one question he's always asked, because I asked him, what's the question you're always asked? And he said is, how do you survive financially? And the answer he gives to that is, you never spend your money. You save all your money that you earn. So you might earn five grand on one gig or piece of uh, art and then nothing for three months. So how are you going to survive on that five grand? So he said he saves all his money and that's how he survived as an artist. I believe a network is vital for everybody, whether you work, whether you're an artist, it doesn't matter. And by way of example, I share this example a lot my tax accountant said to me last year before the end of the financial year, Sue, you need to increase your income before the 30th of June. So I said, okay. So I went out to three of my favorite people in my network and I said, look, this is my accountant said, I need to get some more money. Are you happy to prepay me for some work that I do? Now, I only asked three people and all three people gave me money. The one person gave me 750 I'm telling you, I didn't give them these amounts. They chose these amounts themselves. Another one gave me 2,200 and another one gave me five and a half thousand, all without me doing any work. But because I have a network and I maintain my relationships with my network, you know, it's, it's a way to access those opportunities when all else fails. And boy, have we needed a network through the last couple of years. We also need to remember that no job or enterprise is forever. Um, if Mark wants to share his story later, he's got his story now on LinkedIn. Bravo, Mark. And, uh, you know, we think our career is going to go down one path and then it changes. And so uh, it's fantastic to be able to have a resource such as LinkedIn for that process. So what are the top techniques for creatives? And as I go through these, I invite you to sort of tick off how many you're actually doing already. And if you're not, that's fine. You've got some work that you can do straight away. As I said, this is being recorded. So the benefit of that is that you can actually go through this at your own pace after the presentation. So I apologize in advance if I am a little quick. I've been doing this a long time and very familiar with the content, but I wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to replay it, pause it, and go through it at your own pace. Also, when I put it on my website this afternoon, you've already been emailed the slides as a PDF, but you will have the, the access to that PDF again via the website, as well as um, the YouTube video. So first thing you need to do is customize your link. So when you create a LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn gives you a link and it says first name dash last name and a whole bunch of numbers and letters and you need to change that. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And one of the things that I think puts a lot of people off of putting a profile on LinkedIn, if they are a creative, is they think there's nowhere to showcase my imagery. And I'm here to say there is. Now I realize it's not the same as Behance or some of the other platforms that give you beautiful opportunities to showcase your work. However, you can still do it on LinkedIn. So on your profile, you've got the banner next to your face, which you can put some imagery there. There's a featured section. And in every position you've had in the past, you can add a link. So it could be a link to a video, it could be linked to an image, it could be linked to a PDF. Um, you can put those in there. And you can also create a providing services page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what this looks like on um, Gemma's profile. So here's Gemma's profile and you can see that she has a beautiful piece of her artwork uh, on the top of her banner and she specializes in crystal luxe art. So it's crystal and it's painted in a nice special way. So that's your banner. So you can pop in some imagery there. If you, 
you can already see that I've worked with Gemma and changed her URL. But if you need to change your URL, you just go over here to the right. And what you can see here is there's a pen and you just change it. Now, if your name as one word is not available, you can put the dash. You can also put a number on the end. You can even put the word artist if you wanted to sort of mention a keyword as well. Um, but I prefer just the name if you possibly can, and then you save it. Also on this screen, if for some reason you're on a sabbatical, you want to get away from the online world, you can just turn off your visibility. You don't need to delete your profile. And you also need, whilst you are looking for opportunities and attracting great, you know, um, uh, what do you call it when they request um, commissions, um, keep your details on public and make sure all your other bits and bobs are turned on there. But going back to where else you can keep your details online, there was that banner. And what we've also done on Gemma's profile is we've got the featured section. So there's a couple of older links and a newer link in the featured section. So it's near the top of the LinkedIn profile. So it's pretty obvious. So there's a link to Gemma's personal website and a link to an art auction she was involved in and an exhibition opening. So that's another place to put some imagery. And then of course, under each of her roles, you can see that Gemma's added in some pictures in here. So what you're gonna notice after today's session is when you look at other people's LinkedIn profiles, you're gonna say, oh, they haven't changed the URL. Oh, they haven't put any imagery on. And even professionals don't do this. So if you apply what you learned today, you will actually be doing way better than a lot of professionals are online. So you can see all this imagery here. And even when you get down into education, you can put in sort of images of stuff that you did in your study, um, you know, all sorts of things that you can add in there. So there are some places to put it. I realize it doesn't look as sexy as a beautiful gallery, uh, but it's reasonable. And the other thing is here on this open to button, you can say you're open to work if you're looking for a job. And you can also say that you're providing services. Now, I did message LinkedIn this week because unfortunately, the range of services that you can list if you're an artist are terrible. So LinkedIn definitely needs to improve the range of services that you can list. So you might have to look, stretch the truth a little bit here. But what you can do is you can add 10 services. So you might end up saying you're just consulting as an example. But what you can do is you can provide a beautiful description in there. You can say which location you're based in and if you're available to work remotely and so on and who can see all the services you provide. So that is there. But then when you look at this services page, you can mention who you work for, and you can also put in more of your art. Now, we've only put in two pictures in here, but this providing services page, you can put in, you know, quite a lot of imagery in there. And so that's the additional spot where you can add that in. So I understand that, you know, you're not going to have necessarily it on your profile, but if you have it on your providing services page, people can have a good look at that. And you could even share this little link to your services page if you would like to share that and, you know, treat it like your mini website as well. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Now, the next thing is you can add multimedia. Now, on your mobile phone, I encourage you to put the LinkedIn app on your phone. And what you can do, and I only did mine last night in my office, very late in the evening. So now you can see around my profile photo, there's this bluey purple ring which means that if you visit my LinkedIn profile, you can click on my face and my up to one minute video will appear. Now, I basically just say I'm Sue Elson, I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist and welcome to my profile. I don't say anything too exciting, but I'm sure all of you as creatives can put on something much more fabulous than that. And what you can also do on your mobile phone app is you can add a voice pronunciation of your name. Now you get 10 seconds to do that. So again, put on your best radio or entertain a voice and put in a little voice recording there as well. And what this shows people is that you are digitally competent. 
And if you've got videos, again, you can pop them in the featured section. Now, a lot of artists are always looking for financial support and they need to know what grants are coming up, what opportunities are available. You can uh, follow these organisations on LinkedIn without even being a member and that can still give you access to information. So a couple that I've suggested for you here in Australia are Arts Club, Hub, the Australian Council for the Arts, and the National Association for the Visual Arts. So if there's any other company profiles that you recommend your fellow creatives follow, please copy paste and pop them in the chat. Uh, we would love to uh, share those as well. And then I'm also saving a copy of the chat. So anything that's useful from the chat, I'll also put on the website as well. Don't forget, ask your questions if you've got some. The next one is in the contact info section of your LinkedIn profile, you can add your other creative profiles. So maybe you're on Behance, Adobe Portfolio, Dribble. You might have an incredible YouTube channel, Vimeo, Instagram, Bandcamp, Spotify, SoundCloud. I don't know. It, you're the creative, whatever you have this information online. So what you can see here on Gemma's profile is this is just a screenshot of her profile is we've added in her website and we've chosen other so that we could write a 30 character description of the website. Now, when you type in that website, you do not manually type it in when you enter it in LinkedIn. You visit the website and you copy paste the link because the last thing you want to happen is to have a website link that doesn't work. So please visit your website, copy paste the link in and then give a 30 character description. You can put three websites in there, you get to choose. And as I said earlier, if you would like to have your free Google website, here's an example of one I created for Paul S.J. Smith, he's a piano tuner. And if you Google piano tuner, Albert Park, he comes up in Google search results with his free Google website. So you can see the layout of that free website. And you can consider putting something like that up for yourself as well. The next tip is to find and connect with people. And I find that a lot of people in the arts world do not maintain relationships. They come into a gig, go out of a gig, and all those people that they met, they lose. They, they don't keep in contact. Now, if you choose a platform, I don't know, like Instagram, and Instagram is no longer popular, then it'll disappear. But the reality is LinkedIn has been around since 2003. In 2016, it was acquired by Microsoft. So that means that obviously it's here to stay. I cannot imagine Microsoft ever letting anybody go from the LinkedIn thing. And it's the world's largest network of professionals. And apparently more than 50% of them earn over $100,000 a year. Now, I know money's not everything, but boy, it's good to be able to reach people with your art and be able to share it through these channels. Ah, Dave's mentioned he follows the Australian Society of Authors. Thank you, Dave, for mentioning that one. Yes, I'm a member of the Australian Society of Authors. I'm also a member of Writers Victoria. So whatever discipline you're in, make sure you follow those associations. And not only the ones in your home country, but also sometimes the one in other countries because they can give you some fabulous insights as well. Now, the next thing is, let's think about making money out of your work. And again, I'm not saying it's because money is the most important thing, but I'd like you to be paid for your creative endeavours. So if we think about where you might want to showcase your art. Let's say you want to be featured in art galleries. So what you could do is you could search on LinkedIn, as it says here, for art gallery, and you could find all the art galleries in Melbourne by choosing location Melbourne, and then it's going to bring up all these people. And then what you can do after you've updated your LinkedIn profile, according to all my suggestions, is you can then reach out and connect. Hi, Anushka, I'm uh, building my network on LinkedIn and I'm an artist that would love to showcase my work in art galleries in the future. Would you like to connect? And then Anushka can say yay or nay. And the more art galleries you're connected to, the more likely you are to appear in their search results. So think about the people who will pay for your work and reach out to those and add them to your network. 
Now, if you run out of search queries on LinkedIn, because Google say, uh, LinkedIn says you've been doing too many searches, what you can do is you can go to Google Advanced Search. So that's that link there. And then you can search and search and search. So you can, little in quotation marks, Art Gallery and Melbourne. And then you can go through, whoops, sorry, I went down a screen then. I didn't mean to do that. And then what you can do is you can, type in the website linkedin.com here and then do an advanced search and you can search through google and you know until you just can't search anymore and you'll be able to find as many people so for instance in dave's uh, case he's an audiobook producer so what he could do is he could search everybody in melbourne who's an author or a writer and connect with all of those people and then when they look at his profile, say, oh, he does audio books. Uh, that could be a really great strategy for him to just gently introduce himself to people. So please think about who you need to find and who you need to connect with, who you need to have as part of your network and build it on LinkedIn. Um, people expect to be contacted on LinkedIn. So it's, it's not creepy. It's not stalkerish. Uh, it is really, really helpful. Um, thank you, Lilian, for turning up and uh, there'll be much more to come um, in the second half. Now, the se seventh tip is to share your own story. Now, are you tired of every time you meet someone saying how you became an artist and what you do and where your background was and blah, 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 blah? Wouldn't it be nice to say, why don't we connect on LinkedIn and let them read it all later? Because it becomes tiresome to tell that story over and over again you kind of hear your own voice so if you write all this stuff down on your linkedin profile then you could just say look check me out on linkedin if you've got any questions come back to me save yourself all that time now this first link is to an article i wrote on linkedin for women it's not just for women it's for anyone but the idea here is it's just a really quick general introduction so that can be a good starting point the next one is my headline formula. And my headline formula, which is what you write just under your name on your LinkedIn profile, is your label. So I've decided to be called an independent LinkedIn specialist so people can remember that's what I do because that's what I get most of my work from. Then I put keywords in and then I put something in about me personally. I've got the three-step headline formula so that I appear in search results and people can find me. The next one is how to write your profile summary, depending on what your purpose is. So if you've said, look, this creative pursuit, I just wanted as a side hustle for now, I need a job that pays the bills, then you're going to write a different type of LinkedIn profile summary. And, you know, if you want to go back to your creative pursuit later, keep a copy because you might want to reuse it. And the fourth one there is to how to add your achievements. Now, a lot of people feel very uncomfortable explaining their achievements. It is not boasting. It is providing evidence of what you've done in the past. So if you said you're the best sculptor in the whole of Melbourne as rated by so-and-so, well, that's probably a little bit uh, over the top. But if you say you've won awards for this and you've been acknowledged by that and you've been uh, commissioned to do X and somebody else has invited you to be involved in Y, because these are all over and above what you were initially going to do, they are achievements. So it's not just sales, it's not just performance, it's not bums on seats, it's whatever you've done. And as far as I'm concerned, Anything you've done that is outside your comfort zone is an achievement. Congratulations and well done. For some people, just turning up to this webinar was difficult. I entered a poetry competition, not because I wanted to win, because I wanted to enter. Like that was the achievement for me. And I was given a link to a fabulous article this week on Lit Hub about if you're a poet, you've got to aim for 100 rejections before you'll ever get published. Now, I have a philosophy. I'd rather be read than published. So my poems are online and on my website. I'm really happy about that. Um, but if you want to be published, you've got to be prepared to be rejected. And so if you're ready for 100 rejections, you can say, right, I'm getting close to the goal. I'll eventually get uh, to the point where I am accepted. 
if nothing else, people are going to get very familiar with you because you keep entering and they're going to say, oh, here they are again. Uh, you know, 10th time lucky. Uh, so keep these things in mind. Um, it's all part of the journey. And so long as you keep taking action, that's all you need to do. Now, there are a lot of settings you can adjust on your LinkedIn profile. And I'll show you these. These are the ones that I classify as the most important. They're not, there's others, there's plenty of others. So I was doing work for another client this week and he started getting lots of notifications via email. So we turned off his communication settings. So I'll quickly show you these. The first one, so we'll just go to profile and settings and apologies that the internet is never as quick as my fingers, uh, which is all very frustrating. So it means that I get to sort of just waffle on a little uh, whilst we wait for it to get there. So settings and privacy. One of the first things that I do before I work with anyone is I suggest that they get a copy of their data. So you can choose download the larger data archive, request it, type in your password and get it sent through to you. So the benefit of this is you should do this every six months, just in case in the unlikely event that LinkedIn goes poof overnight or your account is deleted because you're a naughty person on LinkedIn, at least this way you've got some sort of backup of your data. And there's a really interesting file on there called inferences that you will get when you get that download. I was super excited to read my inferences file because what it said was that I was born in 1975 instead of 1965. So LinkedIn thinks I'm 10 years younger than I really am. So wait for that link from LinkedIn, download the files and check out the files um, because they're really interesting. Now, in terms of account preferences, uh, I do recommend that you turn off autoplay videos and I also recommend that you turn off people also viewed. The last thing you want to do is have somebody else visit your profile and is like, oh, I want to go see Mary instead. That's the last thing. So just turn that one off. Uh, Ashley Brown said, Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance received 121 rejections before an editor finally accepted, went on to sell 5 million copies and influence a generation of thinkers, including me. Thank you, Ashley. What a terrific story. 121 rejections. Yes. Yeah, so... There you go. And look, I've published hundreds of articles. I've been on radio, haven't been on television, been on podcasts, I've done recordings, been at events, spoken, blah, blah, blah. But I still haven't promoted my books. <laughs> so uh, I, that's what I need to do. And don't worry, I do have a little strategy that I'm preparing. Uh, but yes, you've also got to promote your work. So this is think of this as another step in that process. Now, the other thing you need to do is add in any email addresses you've ever had onto your LinkedIn account so you don't accidentally create a duplicate account and so that anybody who has their email address in their contacts will come through to this account. Your visibility. Let's say you are applying for a job and tomorrow you have an interview and you want to check someone's profile out who's going to be interviewing you. You might say, look, I don't want them to know that I've checked them out. So I'll make myself anonymous, go and visit their LinkedIn profile and then come back and turn myself back on. The benefit of leaving yourself turned on is if you check out someone online, there's a 30% chance they'll then come back and look at you. How cool is that? So I see it as a great cold calling technique for all the introvert creatives out there. So keep that in mind as well. Also, if you leave yourself turned on, you will be able to see the last five people who looked at your LinkedIn profile and those five people are all warm leads. They're already interested in what you do. So you could consider those as people you approach and say, thanks for stopping by my LinkedIn profile. Would you like to connect? Whilst you're looking for work and opportunities, I would suggest that who can see or download your email address should be changed to anyone on LinkedIn. And here in this data privacy, that's where you can also get that copy of your data. There's lots of other settings. I'm not going through those today. It'll just take too long, uh, but they're the main ones. Now, you can also turn on LinkedIn creator mode. Now, I have done that and uh, we've done it for Gemma as well. And what it means is when you visit Gemma's profile, 
you will see a big blue follow button. So I'll just put her link in the chat if you want to check it out. So when you see that follow button, don't press it. Press the more button and then you will be able to connect with Gemma. Now, hopefully you will choose personalize invite and you can say, nice to see you featured on the LinkedIn for Creatives webinar. Shall we connect? So that way she knows how you found out about her. But you can always check that more button and connect. But with creator mode, you can see here that she has these five hashtags. So Gemma has made a commitment to talking about these topics in anything she shares on LinkedIn. So if she adds these hashtags, which are just topics or subjects or names uh, about what she's doing, then people can click on that hashtag and see everything else that has the same hashtag. So it's like a link to everything else with that same content. So I really encourage you to perhaps consider being a creator. It's in this little section here where you turn it on. And once you've turned it on, you will, if you've got more than 100 followers, you will get access to LinkedIn newsletters and LinkedIn Live. But as I said, I wouldn't worry about LinkedIn Live. I just focus on if you're going to do a newsletter, uh, you've got to be committed to it. I do one once a month that I also publish on my website via email. Um, but yeah, you can also start one of those. The first time you produce a newsletter, it will actually invite every single person in your network to subscribe. So you might want to build your network up and then um, create your newsletter. So that's that one. Um, and then there's a little webinar I did on LinkedIn for creators if you'd like to watch that. So statistics. If you click on all of these links, you will be able to write down your stats as at today. If you then do what I suggest in this webinar, you can check your stats again in three months and see how they have improved. So just as a little example, and I was so excited to see this, um, uh, we looked at Gemma's statistics and she's had 14 views in the last 90 days. But guess what? We started updating her profile last week and she has already seen a 333% increase in views. How cool is that? So um, once you update your LinkedIn profile and get all these things happening, uh, you too can see an increase in views and hopefully also an increase in the number of times you appear in search results. So this number should be over 100 and this number should be over 50. You can see your followers and connections here. And you can also see how many recommendations you have. I don't think Jenna, uh, Gemma has any yet, but she does have some votes for her top skills. So you wanna try and get 20 votes for your top skills as well. So all those statistics are mentioned there uh, and uh, hopefully you will be able to achieve them and also start posting at least once a week and writing an article, you know, maybe three times a year. So there are lots of old and new features on LinkedIn. Now, you definitely, if, I, if you learn nothing else, remember to fill in your LinkedIn profile. It's the most important thing. And if you need some help, you can look at my LinkedIn profile or you can look at Gemma's for ideas. You can subscribe to job alerts, turn on open to work, turn on providing services, do your maintenance uh, and, you know, make sure that you do the, what I say in 20 minutes a week and create your own page. So this here is a screenshot of my own page. And you might say, what's the point of creating a page when you're the only employee? Uh, well, you can see here, I've got 492 followers and every event I run is listed on the events tab and any videos that I upload will also appear on the videos tab. So it helps people get a much bigger picture of what I'm about via that company page. Uh, notification bell. So if you like my stuff, you can visit my LinkedIn profile, press the notification bell, and you're more likely to see my updates. You can host events. You can turn on creator mode. And if you are working for someone at the moment, please support them. I realize it may be nothing to do with your artwork, but if somebody's paying you, I reckon we should support them. And so think about ways that you can do that. Um, there's lots of ways, even if you just follow the company page and like a couple of posts, uh, that's going to help them. So how can you use LinkedIn? And boy, the time is going fast. 
The first thing is to increase your engagement ratio. So I'm guessing that most of you may have created a LinkedIn profile and that's kind of it. You spend most of your time on Instagram or TikTok or some other social media, YouTube, whatever. Uh, but if you log on to LinkedIn once a week and you start engaging with other people's content, they're going to like you. And I call it being the personal encourager or the nice auntie or uncle. You know that nice auntie or uncle who is always supportive and saying, you're doing a great job, love your work, love your effort. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. So increase your engagement ratio because all social media is basically a megalomaniac. And if you engage with the content, it gives the algorithm some clue as to what is good content and it's more likely to go further. You can also provide information on social media. So if you are not sure about how to start putting content online, this article here talks about the three stages being engage first, start curating, which means you get something from somewhere else and share it, and then create it. And the third one is to, um, uh, yeah, create your own content because after you've curated, um, creating is, is the final stage and that's when you put your own stuff out. This is a daggy picture of me in my Westpac career and what I was doing was recycling an article I'd written previously. But because it is a photo with a picture in a face and it's got some text over it, a lot of people who are ex-Westpac employees even recognise their uniform. And I got quite a lot of engagement out of that. And it was just, you know, just a sort of a random post. Uh, but think about uh, how you can make your story engaging. I do not share my personal life. Um, I only share my professional life and I make things friendly and professional. Although my poetry does, you know, explore a little bit of my thoughts and feelings. But um, most of the time, my digital content is friendly and professional. That's kind of my motto. Now, there's additional features if you are, are going to be sharing content. So you could use at mentions, which is the same as all the other platforms. So I had this piece of content published in the Fueled by Growth magazine. So I've at mentioned them to let them know that I'm featuring it. I've provided a link. And I've also created a post with little tick emojis because emojis give a bit of colour and flavour as well. I put in some hashtags and that one did quite well. And the benefit here is I'm using those features. But if people don't even click on the link or read the article, they can still get a little bit of useful stuff just from the post itself. So please keep that in mind. If you're going to upload a video, I recommend that you put the video on YouTube first. Then you can get a little bit later the uh, subtitles, you can edit them, then you can download them. They're called captions and it's an SRT file. So when you upload it on your laptop or desktop into LinkedIn, you can upload the video and you can upload the captions. And that way anybody with any ability can therefore watch your video online and the videos that have the captions are obviously going to do better than the ones that don't. The other thing that you can do in terms of a new type of content is you can upload a PowerPoint presentation that you've saved as a PDF or any PDF, and you can add that as a document, and then it becomes a little slideshow if it's got multiple pages. It can be in portrait mode, it can be in landscape mode, but it gives, and that's what I'm going to do when I share the details of this event later today. So if you check me out on LinkedIn later today, you'll see the slides appear as a document. Now, as I said before, you need to build your network. So if you have the LinkedIn app on your phone, you can open the LinkedIn app on your phone right now. And what I want you to do is press in the search box on the top of the screen. It's a big gray box. Then on the side of the gray search box, you'll see some little dots and you need to press on those. That will then bring up your QR code as you can see it here. And also, it will allow you to scan and you'll have to turn on your camera. But if you scan this, you'll see my profile and you will see the follow button and then you'll see three dots and then you'll you press the three dots, personalise the invite, nice to meet you at the LinkedIn for Creatives webinar and then you can send off the invitation to connect. So I suggest you take your phone everywhere, who doesn't anyway, and from now on, everyone you meet, unless you think they're a stalker, um, you connect with them on LinkedIn. Now, I've done this as a 
force of habit for every event I go to. I always connect with anyone I meet. And, you know, up to eight years later, I say, oh, by the way, Sue, now I need some LinkedIn help. Okay, no worries. I'm still doing it. Uh, so it is really, really worthwhile to connect with people. You also recommend that, that you update your LinkedIn profile every year and you keep an eye on your stats and you download a copy of your data. Um, if you're an employee, you can support your employer and there's a link with some additional tips. Make sure that when you type the employer's name in that you click it from the drop-down box because if you don't click it from the drop-down box, their logo will not appear on your LinkedIn profile and that looks terrible. And this is one of the biggest issues that I find on LinkedIn profiles. People don't select the item and then the logo does not appear. So if the organisation you work with has changed names, put the new name on and in the description box, you can say previously known as XYZ. Um, so, yeah, always try and choose a company name so you can get those logos in there. And again, I realise if you're a creative, a lot of those organisations do not have LinkedIn profiles, but maybe you can mention the funding body and then look like an employee of the Australian uh, Council for the Arts. You know, who knows? Uh, but it's worth getting those logos. Now, if you are an employee of any enterprise, you need to abide by their social media policy. So it's a good idea to find out what that is and if they have any recommendations. Oh, Olivia's got a comment here. Being in a corporate role, from my perspective, organisations and employers are increasingly looking for new ways to engage employees, create new experiences and points of difference for corporate and client events, exciting workspaces, different ways to engage with customers, reward employees, bring teams together, etc. Great opportunities for artists to promote their services to organisations with dedicated budgets to spend on these types of products and services. Absolutely, Olivia. And half the time that the, the event organiser is looking for someone, they go looking, but they can't find anyone. So if you were able to be found, you will get the gig. And I remember years ago, I was working with a broadcast engineer from uh, Brazil, I think, or South America somewhere. And here in Australia, all the broadcast engineers are not degree qualified, but she was actually a proper engineer, degree qualified. So I looked up the myfuture.edu.au website. And what we found on there is most of the people in broadcasting were only people who'd learned on the job. And of course, they didn't have LinkedIn profiles either. Um, it was all sort of a boys club, you know. Oh, yeah, my mate knows he knows him and hosts her and blah, 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 whatever. So I said, look, all we've got to do is tell your story and you will get the work because you will be the only broadcaster uh, person that can do this and you'll be the only one on LinkedIn. And sure enough, she got a job directly in broadcasting uh, very soon after updating her LinkedIn profile. So you creatives who've made the effort to attend this webinar are the front of the pack. This is important. And if you get on before everybody else does, you will build the reputation. You will come up in search results. If people get what they want from you, LinkedIn will keep serving you up um, in search results. And if you Google LinkedIn specialist, just in Google, you will find me in those search results. Now, when you get brave enough, you can consider writing articles. And I realize some people don't want to do articles. An article could be, here's a video of me doing some pottery. Here's a video of my exhibition. Here's a video of my favourite cat. You know, it can be whatever you like and you just put it in something called an article. Now, the benefit of this is that it stays on the internet permanently. So rather than being something that is in the news feed and disappears, an article will stay there. So definitely consider doing that. I would also love you to please, please, please bring your artistic flair, your fabulous personality, your style, your mojo, show it to us. Let us see how fabulous you are. Don't think because it's a professional platform you have to put a suit and tie and ignore who you are. The people who get on in this world are the people who are themselves. And in my Gigson's book, I talk about you being your own kind of peculiar. Just because one person doesn't like you doesn't mean somebody else won't adore you. You might be just what they need. And by you being yourself, then other people can be themselves. So I would love to sort of, you know, if you do some work on your profile and you want to show it to me afterwards, please email me a link. I'll give you some feedback for free. 
I want to see you push yourselves and put your story out there. Now, bear in mind, if you are trying to make a living, you the only thing you own online is your own website. But social media, LinkedIn is essential in my view. Google My Business is essential. Everything else is optional. Even TikTok, because remember, TikTok has a really young audience and they might not be prepared to pay for your work. Uh, you need to get reviews because people will ch check your name and the word reviews. So you need to get reviews. You need to get listings. You can get free listings on white pages, yellow pages, true local, um, on your industry association. If you're a member, like I'm a member of the Australian Society of Authors, so my Australian Society of Authors profile appears in search results. And then links on other websites and any publications you've had. If you have all of these things, that will help you be found online. And last but not least, you need to abide by the LinkedIn user agreement. So if somebody comes along and says, oh, you can automate that and you can connect to 3,000 people and you can make $500,000 a year, don't do it. You're not allowed to automate things. You can systemize things. You can get people to help you but you cannot get some virtual assistant from a foreign country operating your account. And quite frankly, I would never recommend it because they're going to have a different perspective and it should be you out there online. And everything I'm suggesting should be done in 20 minutes per week, which is the next topic. So if you're going to do it in 20 minutes a week, get ready with your questions. I will be opening up the floor directly. If you don't want your face to appear on the recording, please leave your camera off. If you're happy for your face to be on the recording, you can turn your camera on. Um, now, 20 minutes. Log on and check out what's in the news feed, like a couple of posts, eight minutes. Check out your notifications and see if there's anything you need to follow up on. See who's invited you to connect with them and perhaps start connecting with a couple of extra people. Visit and engage with the content of your employer if you have one or your favourite people, if you want to bookmark them in your internet browser, or you've got a little list of links that you like to click and engage with, edit or update your own profile or settings, because let's face it, things are always changing. Uh, post an item in the news feed, that will take about two minutes, and reflect on your statistics activity and results, and make plans for next week. And if you want to keep up to date with what's happening, you can subscribe to that newsletter so that you're on top of what's happening on LinkedIn. Uh, now, bonus. Make sure you do your updates uh, as soon as you can. You can save a copy of your LinkedIn profile to PDF by pressing on the more button. So that can be a quick and dirty resume you can give to people if you need it. Get that copy of your data, check all your backend settings, check on your strategies and consider doing some more training. If you are in Australia and you have a library card from your local library, you can get access to LinkedIn Learning for free. And I started doing a little workshop on how to be a good writer, and it was fabulous. Um, so I'd really recommend some of those little micro-credentials in there as well. Is it necessary to have 500 connections? What is a realistic number? I have a goal of 150. Fantastic question, Lizette. My minimum number is 60 that I recommend for people. Most of us know 250 people, like friends, family, cousins, uh, people we've worked with, their friends, you know, we, that's what we know. Once you get over 500, what happens is it just says 500 plus on your LinkedIn profile, which for some people feels a bit more comfortable than, you know, 421 or something. Uh, but, you know, just build it up over time. There's no rush. There is a number called Dunbar's number, if you want to Google that, Dunbar, D-U-N-B-A-R, and it says the number of relationships we can realistically maintain is about 160. So your 150 is spot on. And if you had a really good relationship with those 150 people and looked after them, uh, definitely you could probably get plenty of work just out of maintaining those relationships. So great question. Thank you for asking. So where to from here? Well, I have loads of publications. You can check out the other online webinars and recordings that I've done. You can see what other presentations are coming up for me. Some of them are open to the public, which you are welcome to join. Um, haven't mentioned LinkedIn Learning. Are the certificates you get for doing those courses any value? The info I got from those being good, but what about the certificates? Um, actually, I think it depends on which course you do because some of them appear to be automatically added to your licenses and certifications and others are not so uh, as I said you can use your library card to get access to LinkedIn learning for free 
Um, and then, you know, you can add them yourself in either the courses section or the education section or the licenses and certification section or all three and you pay for it. Well done, Ashley. I pay for my LinkedIn subscription per year because that saves me a little bit. And I also love LinkedIn Premium for being able to see the last 90 days of people who've looked at me because all of those people are, again, warm leads. And I occasionally reach out and say, thanks for stopping by my LinkedIn profile. Would you like to connect? Now, here's a list of the previous and the upcoming LinkedIn Insight webinars. So I imagine for some of you, the LinkedIn for Authors one on the 8th of June might be one you would like to pop in your calendar. And as I said, you can check out any of those others. This one, the first one was my most popular because I know a lot of business coaches and career specialists. That one is very technical about LinkedIn. So if you want to know more about the techie stuff, uh, that's a good one. Journalists and media professionals, they are got to get their writing published and they need to be out there. So some of you may find that one particularly helpful as well. A reminder, you can download my books for free. You do not need to create an account. You can just go to ResearchGate and click on the books and download them. You can also subscribe to me online. And if you would like to say thank you, which I would really, really, really appreciate, even if there's only one person out of everybody who attends who writes me a Google review, I get excited. I've asked hundreds of students and clients and whatever to write me reviews, and I've got 103. So getting reviews is a tough gig, um, but boy, do we appreciate it. Now, writing reviews can also be a strategy for you. If you start writing reviews of other people and you attach photographs, so maybe you've got a fantastic supplier uh, for your artwork and you take photos and then you write them a review, guess what? You can start earning points from Google. And when you earn those points, your reviews can appear at the top of the list. So whenever someone visits that art shop and checks out the reviews, guess whose Google review they see? Yours with all those fabulous photos. So it can be a really good thing. So that program, I'll pop it in the chat, is called Local Guides Connect. I'm now a six-star reviewer because I've got over 3,000 points. And so a lot of the time my reviews appear before anybody else. Now, I don't know about you, but when you're a creative, everybody wants something for nothing. And it's kind of tiresome to say, you know, I'm not doing it for free. So if somebody comes to you and says, look, we don't have a budget, but we'd really love you. It'd be so fabulous and you'll get exposure, blah, blah, blah. Then what I suggest you do is you send them, you read this article first, and then you draft your reply based on what they could actually offer you. Uh, that would be a really good thing. And also if you need to ask for a freebie, maybe there's something you can offer in exchange for the assistance you're requesting uh, because you might have a bit of a following, you might be able to promote the other party, all sorts of things. You might even just be able to give them a nice pot plant, which they really appreciate. I definitely love indoor pot plants that are cat friendly. Uh, so yes, keep these things in mind. And of course, you can also, if you're connected to me, write a LinkedIn recommendation. Um, Ken's mentioned, Sue, do you have a question? Would you like to unmute, Ken? Over there. Far away. Um, I do have a question, but I will formulate it and send it later. Oh, I just right. pressed the wrong key. No worries. Okay, all good. Um, so, yeah, I'm now open to, uh, to questions. Lizette's got another one. I feel nervous accepting connections with people I don't know, especially as a woman. I appreciate your advice. I recently accepted with someone who was connected to others on my network of people I know. Okay. I've been in the online world since 2001. And yes, I've had a few strange people connect to me and tell me how beautiful I am and, you know, try and convince me to give them money and I don't know, all sorts of nonsense. And as soon as that happens, I block them, I report them, I delete them. Yeah, you know. Don't worry about it. It's just part of the thing. I even went to a conference in Geelong here in Melbourne or Victoria and the guy said he uses LinkedIn as a dating app. He, he looks for nice people who work in HR and he reaches out to them and he apparently he had a really high success rate of getting dates. It's not for dating, but some people use it inappropriately. So please report them. If you accept someone and they become a nuisance, you can remove the connection and also... Um, 
you, you can actually make your own criteria for connecting with someone. So I have a criteria, are they in Australia? Then I pretty much always say yes. Then I look at their profile, make sure they've got a reasonable number of connections. It doesn't look like a computer-generated image. It's got a reasonable story on there. And if they meet all those criteria, then as a general rule, I'll say yes. But if they're a web development person in India, I've got no interest. So I say no to those requests. Uh, or, you know, people who look like they're in the military or, you know, just weird ones. Um, I sort of have a bit of a nose for people who are shonky and because I've been in recruitment and I'm an ex-banker, you know, I just don't trust some people. Uh, Ken said he's currently LinkedIn page focused on his professional life, being allegedly retired. I want to promote my wood turning activities. So do I transfer my existing page or start a new one? Um, okay, so your profile is about Ken and a page can be about what you do. So in your case, Ken, you've got a Manetta Super company page. You could have a Ken Ma company page. And you could put all your wood turning on that. Um, and that would be a good place to put it. I have chosen to use Instagram only for my poetry. I'm not using it for any other purpose. Um, so it really depends on where you think people will purchase your wood turning. Uh, you know, will they be interested on LinkedIn? Will you connect to other wood turners? Will you connect to wood suppliers? You know, there could be any number of people you might want to reach out to as a person. But if you want to aggregate your information, it could be under that providing services page as well as on a company page. Uh, Dave says, if it looks like a dodgy connection request, I reply first and ask them what projects we might do together. That usually tells you what you need to know before accepting the connection. Good suggestion there, Dave. Yep, you can definitely message them. I, I sort of got to, you know, mm. uh, take no prisoners. <laughs> I can't be bothered. Uh, and I don't have the time for a dialogue with everybody. If I get a funny feeling, I always say, if in doubt, no, <laughs> out. Um, and mind you, you can only have 30,000 connections and I've got over 20,000 of them already. So I'm going to run out at some point. I can have an unlimited number of followers, but I can only have 30,000 connections. Um, so you need to keep that in mind as well. Now, it is one o'clock. I will stop sharing my screen. So if you don't want your face to appear on the recording, now's the time to turn off your camera. Um, but I'll open the floor and so that I can see everyone's microphones. Oh, another quick question here. Considering relocating to another state, library assistant want to pursue that career full-time in another state. Can't, yeah, there are not many opportunities in my state. Okay, Lizette, there is a big difference being, between being able to be a library assistant and being able to get a library assistant job. The two skill sets are very different. The skills to get a job are different to the skills to do a job. And I worked with a client who was in Adelaide, which is where I'm from in South Australia. And his wife had a fabulous job in Adelaide, but he could not find work. Uh, thank you, Susie, for joining us. Um, and please put your feedback in and mention what's most helpful to you in the chat, because that's really, really helpful to me. And so he was thinking about moving to Melbourne, trying to find work in Melbourne, and then getting his wife to give up her job and move to Melbourne. And I thought, you can't be serious. Like, you know, she's got this fabulous job. That's ridiculous. So anyway, I helped him with his LinkedIn profile and gave him a whole bunch of new job search strategies. And guess what? He found a fabulous job in Adelaide and they didn't have to move. So if you haven't already seen the help of a career development practitioner or a career counsellor or somebody who can help you with your LinkedIn, there may be a way for you to network, get um, the three best ways to get a job if you are not currently working or you feel there's any disadvantage are through networking, referrals and voluntary work. So start networking with every other library assistant in your state. And then when they see your profile, you never know because up to 90% of jobs are never even advertised. So if you're already connected to all those library assistants, they might consider you. Then if you want to, in the connection request, you can say, hi, I'm connecting to you because I'm involved in um, library work and I'd love to build my network of library professionals on LinkedIn. If you can give me any information on jobs that might be available in our state, please let me know. And that can go in with the connection request. So then they might say, oh, I like the look of Lizette. She looks fabulous. I'll send her to my friend George 
and we'll, you know, you can get an opportunity. Olivia's also suggested you can try universities and schools. So think laterally, perhaps get some professional advice. It could save you a fortune in moving costs. And I have worked with people who move for many, many years. It takes three years to not feel like a newcomer anymore and to re-establish everything that you already have in your existing location. Do you really want to give that up just for a job? I don't think so. So uh, look at many different ways that, oh, you do want to give it up. <laughs> you do want to move. Okay. Uh, well, that's another option. But just bear in mind, it'll take three years to feel unconsciously competent again. Um, so just be aware of that. Cool. All right. So I'll stop the share. Please add in the chat what's been most helpful or you can just mention it live and online and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Just either raise your hand with the reactions button or raise it physically so I can see it uh, or unmute and I will call you. Trevor, I see you first. It's been a remarkable presentation. Can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you. Yeah. I've been uh, attached to a few webinars and this is in the outstanding category and I haven't been able to say that of any of the others. Oh, I'm an you. author and artist and I have a couple of uh, LinkedIn business pages, each of which has got over 300 followers. And you've filled in a hell of a lot of blanks. I'm not getting any traction. Um, and it's not because my books are crook, because I haven't read them to start. <laughs> but I noticed that you have a, an author's uh, webinar coming up 8th of June. Yes. Um, and it's quite specific, obviously, to, to authors. And it will cover a lot of ground that you haven't covered today. It will, yeah. I should also ask you, and maybe it's on other people's minds as well, for uh, personal consultancies. Uh, can you talk to that for uh, a few minutes? Your cost for how I can get to talk to you? Uh, yep. How, um, how, okay. How conduct your business. Thank you, Trevor. Um, okay. So first of all, um, if if money is an issue please just let me know that up front, okay? Because my rate is 200 Australian dollars per hour and I tailor everything for you. So you let me know what your questions are, specifically what you need to do. Any resources that I give you are, are included. If you Google LinkedIn for authors, you will actually see an article I've written. So you can start by going through that article yourself. Um, if you look at the services page at sueelson.com, you will see a description of the types of things I work with people. But um, I'm working with another author, who, author who's currently enjoying life in Portugal. Dave will know who that is, Dr. Richard Anthony Harris, who uh, has written a book related to John Lennon's song, Imagine, about a future world. And John Lennon's son has just released a video recording of him singing it. And I sent it off to Richard last night and he said, all of his other friends have sent it to him too. So he's done a really good job of letting people visualise what he's about. So just as an example, when I was Sue Everything, I didn't get any gigs. But when I became Sue LinkedIn specialist, people remembered that's what Sue does and that's how I got work. So uh, it's a really good idea you know, if you're a generalist author who does a whole bunch of different things, then that's kind of a bit trickier. But if you're an author who specialises in particular genres or you've got some sexy tag line, uh, put that everywhere so that people, every time they see you online, they get that consistent message. Mm. That's really, really important. Okay, mm. that's great. Uh, just tell us, if you would, and maybe I've missed it, that you have put this webinar uh, together in order to attract business. Uh, and potentially I'm, I'm a customer for that business. So mm -hmm. what, what would you prepare for me? You said I can ask you questions, but that's probably not what I'm looking for. Mm. I'm looking for someone to hold my hand and look at my stuff and say, well, this is good, but this is crook. This is how you need to fix it. Yeah, yeah. No, I do that as well. So it's just per time. So, you know, it's an hourly rate. I don't have some, you know, sausage factory process. Um, you know, I just help you. So perhaps, Gemma, you can just quickly comment on how this process has been for you because I've helped you with your LinkedIn profile and you can sort of share what the experience was like. If you can unmute. Are you still here, Gemma? Yep, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, no, it's been a fabulous 
um, process. Sue's been, um, I've, I've seen Sue a few times on a few different um, webinars. And then I was very fortunate that she had asked if um, we could, it was like more of a collaboration really, helping each other out. Mm. And going through a little bit by little bit of my profile, which I thought I'd done sort of okay, but there was so much more mm. that needed tweaking and fixing and um, it's been it's been a fabulous experience. Thank you, Sue. I am very, very grateful um, for this for this webinar and for you, yeah. really. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool. The other thing I do, um, just to give you a bit of a clue, Trevor, is I also help with Google My Business so that you can appear in Google search results and do some general edits on your website. Mark's a student of mine from the Centre for Adult Education and Mark just made this incredible impression on me. So please say hello, Mark, and introduce what you do because I just think you're fabulous. Oh, thank you so much, Sue, and like everybody else. Um, can you hear me first up? Yes, yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah, because I got my headphones on. Um, thank you. Oh, I, uh, everyone else uh, said this already, but uh, you're so generous with your time and so accurate and so to the point. And uh, you are the guru god of uh, LinkedIn, I think, on the planet <laughs> Earth. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> um, I really appreciate what I've learned. And I, uh, I've got so many projects I'm juggling right now and post-COVID reinventing my own personal career in my, in my genre. And I, I finally built my first uh, LinkedIn profile uh, about, about a month ago now, I think it was. And uh, it needs some improvement. I think I'll be looking at Google My Business and maybe a little bit of tweaking from Sue personally as well to get that last bit of uh, it uh, put together. But the course and the CAE really uh, gave me the fundamentals to start so I could, because it's intimidating when you start from the mm. beginning and uh, there's too so much to know. And like anything, it just gets more and more granular as you get closer and closer. But uh, yes, yeah, Sue, uh, you, you, um, you're my life saver to everyone who wants to start in this business. So thank you so much there. Oh, and tell everybody what you do because it's so interesting. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm not telling everyone what I do. You know how we're all so <laughs> modest. Yes. Well, I, 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 uh, Sue has actually, I noticed you mentioned it in the uh, little profile for the pre-reading. So that was sweet. I'm a, I'm a professional magician and illusionist. And uh, I have had a different career. I started out after I left school learning to fly and then I was a, a, a charter pilot and then I worked for Qantas as a pilot for 12 years flying 737 jets and then all of a sudden I had an accident and I lost my license my medical ability to fly airplanes anymore and we had to reinvent myself and uh, I had it been a part-time professional magician even when I was flying jets uh, for Dracula's as a vampire magician <laughs> and uh, so when all everything changed I had to reinvent myself as a magician and I did that for a good number of years and then I consulted for the last 10 years uh, working on television shows and I've been shows from London to Las Vegas um, in big shows. So I've been behind the scenes. But after COVID now, uh, that sort of whole industry has changed. So now I want to be in front of the stage again. So I have to reinvent myself. And uh, if anyone's looking for a wedding magician, I specialize as Mark Mayer wedding magician at Magical Moments, uh, weddingmagic.com.au. And uh, it's the, the basic idea that very quickly is that uh, every wedding has its quieter moments when the bride and groom are off having their photos and everyone's standing around going, Oh, that's really nice. What do we do for two hours? Just make small talk. Well, I mix and mingle with the crowd and do personalized magic uh, to break the ice and keep everyone entertained and make great photo opportunities for everybody. So that's my story. And I'm trying to build it up now as post COVID, yeah. like everybody else. Yeah, but it's just such a great story. And it shows yeah. somebody who's yeah. gone from, you know, a very professional technical background. But the other thing that you said, Mark, that yes. really inspired oh, thanks, me Lizette. was that there's so much. Um, that applies to flying, that applies to art. Mm. Yeah, So absolutely. would you like to yeah, just quickly absolutely. touch on that point? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, people say, well, ma magician to, and this is what I'm going to try to build in my profile, so it tells this picture, and this is a good rehearsal, I guess, as well. Um, you wouldn't think an airline pilot and a magician are the same things, but there's so many identical things. Firstly, being a fastidious, uh, obsessive, compulsive is very advantage because, um, <laughs> because uh, firstly, uh, in, in, in flying, it's a dynamic thing. It's happening in real time. You've got an audience, a worldwide audience. You can't stop and say, oh, wait a minute, we'll just pull over and work out something as you're flying. Everything has to be done 
in real time. And secondly, you have to have contingencies. Something goes wrong, either at the airport, the weather or the airplane, you have to have contingencies. Well, magic performing in live is exactly the same. You're live, you can't in the middle of a show go, oh, just wait a minute, I've got to fix this. No, this show's over then. Um, you've got to uh, have outs. So if something goes wrong in a trick, I've got to know what I'm going to do. So you don't even know something goes wrong. So the, the, the discipline and checklists, uh, aviation has millions of checklists and all my magic, I have millions of checklists to make everything go. So the discipline is almost identical, although I'm allowed to have long hair and look like a <laughs> crazy guy when I'm <laughs> a magician. I had to be yeah. short back and sides and very clean looking, but thank you. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for the nice comments. I saw a lovely comments there. Thank you for a few comments, guys. That was really sweet as well. Thanks. Yeah, uh, look, I think there's so much to learn from your story, Mark. And that's why I wanted, you know, everybody else to listen to it because I think it's really inspirational and I think a lot of people are scared to be creatives and that they, they don't think their art will ever be good enough and you know it's not worth trying and it's too hard and I've got this book in me but I don't know how to write it and I say well start with a website and then they just go pale all the color drains from their face you know a website what do you mean a website I don't know what to do with that and I'm here to say you can start anywhere. You can start by writing something on LinkedIn, you know, and just meeting people. And it's really, really well. Lizette's had a look and see you doing your explanation as a video and post as part of your LinkedIn. People's always looking for Unix and waiting for other events. Yes, they are. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. And Cash, That's a really good idea. It is. A quote I read somewhere, remember, you're always only one decision away from a completely different life. Yes. And also, like, if we have one accident, our life can change in, in an instant as well, you know, and that's obviously yeah. what happened with Mark. So I believe that all of us have something we can do creatively. You know, we are all creators, let's face it. But, you know, I can't fiddle buttons and do audio books, <laughs> which is what Dave can do. So would you just like to mention yourself, Dave, and, and how you help people and what you've learned from LinkedIn? Uh, I can't hear you. Uh, we've got something not working there. I know you're not on mute. Have you got the volume off? Can't hear. No. All right. We'll come back while you have a little. What th happens if I do that? Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can. Yes. Oh, Nick. Oh, my headphones have. Well, Cacked. My, my many, my my much laboured um, Apple earpods look like they've come to the end of their life. Um, look, I just wanted to thank you for the for the opportunity, Sue, and I just wanted to reflect, perhaps towards where Trevor and Mark were talking is that I think Sue, and it's been many years now, I mean, I met Sue very close to the beginning of my business now, which has been running for almost seven years. And um, let me put it this way. If, if I had all of the knowledge that Sue had around um, LinkedIn profile building, how to make connections, um, Google my business, and how once you start building and integrating all of these different um uh, media so they hmm. know about each other even if I had all of that knowledge the thing the unique thing that came from Sue was she was able to look at me and help me build my bio because we are awful as individuals at writing our own biographies if anybody's if anybody wants guaranteed writer's block <laughs> try and sit down at the computer and go I'm just going to write myself a little four, four or five page you know one page biography of myself you'll be stumped for weeks and it'll it'll come out as being self-deprecating you won't talk about anything that you're good at you'll say oh yeah that it's accidental but yeah I had a bit of luck and this is all based on chance so I think that's one of the key mm. aspects that I enjoyed the most about Sue and other professionals I've worked with but I think particularly with Sue she gave me that first light bulb moment where if you work with someone then they can actually distill and hold a mirror up to what you do which you can't do very well yourself and i don't know whether hmm. whether mark would agree that there's there's a lovely distillation that comes along just by virtue of the relationship with sue i think yeah Absolutely. thank you Dave. yeah look <laughs> yeah. I, I like to ask questions and in that question process we, you, you have the answers like I, I don't have the answers you have the answers I just find the answers. Uh, so that's right. yeah, we've got that's... the story with it. We've got the story within us, but I think you've got that lovely, lovely skill to be able to distill the story, but also pick out the sizzle. You know the bits mm. that are really interesting. Mm. Like you know, great example with Mark. You know the, the relationship between flying and magic. And I'm just going. When I, I always watch aeroplanes in the sky and think that of itself is an act of magic. 
but uh, but as you say, the checklists and, and and how it all goes together, that's an amazing parallel. And it, it makes, is. makes for an interesting, compelling story. And I think when you're promoting yourself and wanting people to understand kind of what drives you, you know, not necessarily um, a list of, you know, a menu of 35 different tricks that Mark does. I mean, that sort of puts him in the same category as all other musicians. Yeah. But now we understand what drives Mark to have done this stuff, which is, you know, a, a totally mm. uh, a, a totally engaging and wow. interesting. I yes. love the way Mark also described that point in the wedding where you're all standing around and you've got nothing to talk about. Like, <laughs> I saw that with my eyes immediately. Like, exactly. I know that experience, you know, and relatives you can't stand and you have to pretend you want to talk about handbags. You know, like, I just hate those experiences. I want Precisely. authentic conversations mm. with genuine people who are on the same path. Um, and, yes, Lizette, thanks to Gemma for letting us, us use your profile yeah. and, and as an example because there was no point giving you my profile because I've got a lot of technical stuff on my profile. So I wanted to use Gemma's so you've got that roadmap if, if you are, you know, in that art space. Oh, yeah. No, thank you because it's, yeah. been, it's been fabulous. So thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Yeah, and come and, come uh, and listen I, to Sue. Come, sorry, Sue, come, but come, and, come to Sue's um, come to Sue's webinar specifically around authors. Mm -hmm. It's real, like Trevor, very, very, very worth going to. And as an audio producer, um, and I have a fair bit to do with with authors, um, book coaches, publishers, that sort of thing. So, so um, again, it's not just it's not just a, a webinar for authors, but you can also gain an insight into those people who are involved in that industry, what they're looking for from authors, what what they want to see, hear, how they get to how they get to know you, how your content's relevant, and all that. So, mm. I'd certainly certainly advocate coming along for that yeah, and um yeah and if you if you want to um if you want to narrate your own audio your own audio book in the end then come and come and talk to me <laughs> and dave doesn't make it too intimidating like you know the concept of reading out your own book is like oh no my voice is ordinary and it'd be better yeah. to have an actor but it's not you know you're the author and how much more authentic. And uh, Dave and I bumped into a guy, this, this amazingly intelligent guy from Canada came to me and he said, how do I write my book? And I thought, well, rather than me just talk to him, why don't we run a webinar? So then Dave got on board. And so the three of us are having this conversation about how to write a book. Um, in fact, what I'll try and do is I'll try and find the link. So, and I'll pop that in the chat. And you can listen to that webinar because I think it um, it talks a lot to some of those things that you're concerned about, Trevor. And it's more about, you know, how to start writing it. But I think um, it, it'll give you some other things to, to reflect on. And this guy is just so intelligent, you know, Daniel. Um, I found the link. So let's pop that in the chat. And, um, yeah, you can check that out as well. I think that may also be helpful Thank to you. you. Yeah, Excellent. cool. Yeah. Uh, now, any other questions? I'm loving this dialogue, by the way. It's so nice to speak to creatives. It really well, is. Yeah. I, I think Renee Brock Brack is a remarkable looking person by the photograph uh, on my screen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that makes him memorable, Trevor. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's a terrific branding exercise. Yeah. And he also has this lovely dulcet tone voice, which, you know, <laughs> I think that helps a lot of us as well because it's so clear and easy to understand. Very kind people. Very, very kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> and he's humble. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'll turn the screen off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. And Ashley, thank you for being such an active participant in this presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. No problem. Yeah. Great to have you with us. Yeah, I just, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, I just put um, a recommendation on your page. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, now, that's actually a really good strategy for you because I have like 1,700 people looking at my profile every yeah. 90 days. So as they scroll down, they're going to see your recommendations. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's good, a good, good. Strategy. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. 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 Well, I have one from me as well. So oh, thank you, Trevor. I appreciate that. Um, I've got a question here. I'm from Puerto Rico and fluent in Spanish. Should I choose the option of having my profile in Spanish too? Absolutely, because you could be the only profile that's in Spanish. 
So therefore you're more likely to appear in search results as well. I had one client who was from Belgium and he was, he worked with me in Melbourne and then he moved to Sydney. And because he had told his entire story, a Belgian company found him on LinkedIn and he got a gig, which was like $5,000 a day for three months because he had that Belgian experience and he was based in Sydney. So telling your whole international story is fantastic as well. Um, really, really helpful. Yeah. And I love doing these webinars because it makes me keep <laughs> learning things and it gives me content that I can share on social media as well. So, yeah, it's really helpful. Renee, nice to see you. <laughs> what see a transformation. You. Mark must have had something to do with that. There's an <laughs> illusion going on here. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Welcome. I, um, I love Highland cows and that one is particularly cute. And so it's my preferred. It's not very professional, but it is very sweet. So thank you for noticing. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a vast improvement to reality. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's nice. So thank you. Uh, what did you learn from today that you can implement, Renee? Um, I've done a number of, of Sue's classes, which have all been fantastic from a technical point of view and also understanding why we do these things. But um, I must admit, I'm, I've been in television and everything, but I'm just crap at promoting myself. And, and I've just got to actually do it. And I've, the key thing I've taken away is, all right, make 20 minutes work a week. Correct. But I tend to treat my LinkedIn profile as a digital business card that I can set and forget. Mm. So I'm not making the most of it. And I've got a conference coming up where I need to utilise this QR code that you alerted me to that's free. You know, you yes. don't need to go and buy something and then populate my LinkedIn profile with some articles or what I want people to know about me at this conference and then I get all this paralysis thinking, oh, so much work. So that's what I've got to do is activate your 20-minute um, mm. point and see if that does work and think about it incrementally rather than as I have to do it all now. Uh, I think that's a really good strategy, Renee. And believe it or not, I suffer from overwhelm too. Like I have been avoiding video editing for all these years and it's got to the point I've I've even gone round to Martin Healy's house and he's shown me how to use Camtasia and I'm still reluctant to do it you know I've tried doing it on Canva and it just overwhelm overwhelm and so what I've decided is I have to sort of prepare myself you know whether that be chocolate wine whatever you know your, your guilty pleasure is and then allocate that 10 or 15 minutes to just start and not expect to conquer the whole thing in one go. And then when I get a little bit familiar with something, then I move on to the next step. But I don't try and do it all in one sitting. And the reality is if you went through and did everything I suggest on your LinkedIn profile, it's probably going to take you around 10 hours to fill it in. And you might say, oh, my God, but I could spend another 10 hours on my own LinkedIn profile. So it's really about deciding what is the message you want to share? What do you want people to do? And be thinking about your ideal client and getting them or your ideal job offer or your ideal opportunity and making it suit that particular person. Then it becomes very easy because then you're writing for them, not for yourself. And so then you get into that sort of third person state and it can be a little bit easier. Uh, to do it as well but with Richard Harris I said oh would you like me to just show you everything and then you watch the video and do it he says no I want you to do it with me Sue <laughs> so you know it was really I do do some stuff with people but if you can do some of the the hack work yourself it does reduce the amount of time we spend together and and it's good for you as well mm -hmm. remember the process of completing your LinkedIn profile is an opportunity to reflect on all the fabulous things you've done in your life so rather than thinking about, oh, I don't know what to say, just say it. Like once it's done, okay. it's done, right? And like we're all going to die one day, sorry to tell you, uh, and then maybe there's a eulogy and they don't know what to write. So, hey, they just look up the LinkedIn profile. She started her career at such and such and then she went on to so-and-so. It's all there, you know, you're preparing for that. 
Um, not that I'm preparing for it per se. I don't think anybody's going to read any of it because it's too damn long. Um, but the point I'm making is think of it as an opportunity to reflect and remind yourself of all the incredible things you have done. Because when we're in the middle of it, it feels slow and painful and tedious and time consuming. But then when we look back, we think, oh my goodness, I started off as a bank teller and now look what I'm doing, right? And you think to yourself, that's amazing. It's incredible. But if you don't take the time out to write it, you, you never really you say, oh, no, but I haven't done this and I should have done that. And I told somebody five years ago I was going to do why and I still haven't done it. I'm still feeling guilty. Forget it, you know. Think about what you have done. Maybe you had to care for a parent. Maybe you had children responsibilities. Maybe something else popped up in your life and you had to take time out. No problem. It's not the end of the world. And we all make mistakes as well. So, you know, I've written my fifth book. And I've published a digital version, but because I haven't got around to doing the index and then I keep wanting to update it, I still haven't got the damn print book out. Now, I had an online launch in 2020 and I still don't have the print book done. But am I losing sleep over it? No, because, you know, life goes on and I've got to pay the bills. So, you know, I do plan to finish it, by the way. <laughs> and before I put my poetry books out, um, but yeah. It's, it's just don't beat yourself up. It's not worth it. It's never too late and no time's wasted. Yes, Dave. So, so I had a quick suggestion for, for Renee and, and perhaps the other, the other members in the group, and it extends on this idea that we're, that we're really not very good at sitting down and telling our own, telling our own story as, as we think other people should see it. Um, there's this kind of quid pro quo, and I have done it with a marketing friend of, friend of mm -hmm. mine. So, um, so Hunter Leonard and my and myself. So yeah, Hunter's expert in marketing, and I'm hopefully an expert in audio. And so what we actually did is we said, let's do a quid pro quo. So I wrote uh, 600 words that described mm -hmm. Hunter as as I knew him. Yeah, and he did the same for me. Perfect. Amazing! What a great mm. starting point it was. So when you're getting to that kind of um, what I'm going to say in front of the camera, what's going to be the script, you know, all that sort of stuff. It can be a really helpful exercise just to pick a, a, someone who knows you well or you've known well through business or, or, or personally as well, preferably. If, if they've got both of those sides of you, hmm. then if you can literally just write each other's bio for each other and then you'll, you'll push backwards and forwards with it a little bit together and you end up with something which is really a good description of yourself, which you might feel a bit flushy about, and be prepared for that because they will say these nice things where you're going, oh, I can't say that about me. Oh, you don't mean that. But they actually will. I do mean that. That is that that that's this is how I view you. And you're likely to get much closer to a how other people are likely to view and engage with you rather than trying to tell your own story. So give your story to someone else to tell for you if that mm. just as a and, suggestion. And it's, yeah. it doesn't take long. And the other thing is, oh, sorry, you got to go. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind, too, is sometimes it can be good to do this with an activity partner. So you both sit at your computers and you're both doing it at the same time so that, you know, you just feel like you've got somebody to chew the fat with when you need to. But at the same time you're doing this, you need to turn off all of your other platforms so that you're not distracted by notifications or emails popping up or anything like that. So, you know, you're just focused on the one task. Uh, that can help. Um, I was, I was yep, just going to add, after the last week of doing my, um, my whole resume, looking through what I had done, I realised all this all the stuff I had actually achieved. And it was a massive sense of confidence mm. for me. It was mm. a real confidence boost going, oh, my God, I did that and that and that. And so having that time to reflect has been, I don't know, invaluable, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. So don't think it is a terrible task. It's actually a really good opportunity. Uh, Kath, you've been on camera for most of now. Would you like to add something to the conversation? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's something you can take away for yourself? Uh, I've been following up on some of the tips as we've been going. Yes. Um, and I'm a bit like Renee in that I do, I'm like everyone in that I feel a bit overwhelmed when it comes to organising. I'm still trying to get the hang, doing a bit of Instagram over here and trying to build that up and doing a bit of 
you know, yeah. And I did go and buy this thing called a tappy so that when someone taps it, when you meet them, instead of having a business card, it will oh, yeah. connect to all of your platforms. But had I known that there was the the thing here, I would have the QR code here, I would have done that. Although yeah. then I would have gone, Ugh. I mean, I don't know that my, my uh, LinkedIn profile is as full as it should be. Mm. And because mm. I'm trying to get work as a, I'm writing, but also um, getting work in film and television as a script supervisor. Right. Also, I paint. Yes. So there's a few things people might go, she does a bit, like I've actually been told you've got too many things. You should and focus on one. Please shoot the person who said that. To, well, don't shoot them, but, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I disagree yeah. with that entirely, okay? We uh, are yeah. allowed to be multidimensional. And anybody who wants to put you in the painter box or the writer box or the script writer box, you know, that's not fair. You're all of the above. But what you need to do is decide what the main function of LinkedIn will be, right? So mm. if you want the main function to be to get script writing gigs, then that will be what appears in the news feed at the beginning of your headline. And then you'll put in sculptor, painter and all those other things afterwards. Right. Mm. So I put in the word dancer. So people think, well, she's not ready for retirement because she's still wriggling and jiggling and whatever. It's bad, mm. by the way, very bad dancing, mm. but let's not worry about that. Um, but I do that to let people know that I'm still active. But believe it or not, I've appeared in search results for dancer. But has anybody called me up and said, hey, Sue, come and dance mm. for us? <laughs> Hell no. So, you know, it's you don't have to have everything sort of in a box. You know, it's not like that. And my Gigsters book is all about this journey because thanks to technology, we're not just going to be one thing anymore. We're going to be this and a bit of that and a bit of something else and we're all going to have work. So it's not one thing. We're not an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor. I mean, some of those people will still exist. But even the lawyers, you know, they often have side hustles of something else that they love to do. So... You know, the sooner we accept that everybody has multiple capabilities and should be allowed to explore all of them, you know, the better it will be for all of us. Uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a crying shame that people don't explore some of these things. And I feel so sorry for women in the past who were only ever allowed to be a nurse, a teacher, a secretary or, I don't know, a homekeeper. That was it, you know. And so you think about how frustrated those women must have been with their lives uh, not being able to explore their creative potential. But now we can. So let's use the tools to, to get those opportunities and really take them to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, that would be my, my words. Hmm. I'll, I'll give it a go. Uh, yeah, I hope you do. Yeah. Thanks. Any mm. other final questions? This is our longest webinar, by the way. So mm. well done. That's uh, an achievement in itself. Thank you again, Gemma. Pedro, yes, please Thank go. you. Yes. Yep. It's been great to meet okay, you all. Okay, nice to see you all. Thank you, Gemma. Bye. Pedro, you have a question? Can you unmute? There, there yeah, it is. Hi. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Right. Uh, yeah, my question was, if we talk, if we are able to speak more than one language, would you recommend having like a version for each language on our profile or yes. just uh, wait for the research um, for it to have the translator automatically by the browser? Yes, so you can mention the languages you speak on your LinkedIn profile. So I've got English and French because I did French at school for five years, but I have only mentioned elementary proficiency. If I created a profile in French, I could potentially get a lot more search results as well. So an English profile and a French profile. But my, pro, my French is not good enough for me to translate, so I haven't done it. I just turned on the feature. But the reality is if somebody was looking in French and they found my French version, then I would do better. So, yes, if you can have one in English and one in Spanish or whatever language it is, um, then that would be fabulous. You can have the two. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, great question. Any other okay. questions? We're all done. 
Well, thank again, you, thank you for joining us. My great pleasure to so provide this to you all. Um, I've really enjoyed the questions and, and the stories. I love hearing stories. And um, if I didn't run this, I wouldn't have this opportunity. So it's all good. And uh, I get to reuse the recording as well. So people can use it in the future. Not well, everybody will listen to a whole hour and a half, of course. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely lots of stuff that we've covered. And so thank you all for that. And uh, look forward to seeing you, you so online much, somewhere else. Thank you, Thank you, Sue. Thank when, you. When did, when did you say that? When you did you say the LinkedIn for Authors? Uh, June 8th, was it? June. Said? 8th of June. June 8th. Yeah. 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 Mm. Hopefully, look forward to seeing you all again there. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye bye. 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 bye.